Hi everyone, welcome to my top 10 games for Essen 2016. And I will say up front that these games were found by combing through the amazing Board Game Geek Essen preview from Eric Martin. I'll put a link to that in the description because it is fantastic at kind of giving a quick description of what every game is like and some information about where it's going to be and how much it's going to be. It's a fantastic resource every year. And there's also on Tabletop Together, there is a fantastic little way of kind of marking whether you want, like or need something and kind of making you some printable things uh, that can show you either the games in the order of your priority or the order in which you might find them in the halls. It's a fantastic little tool and I'll put a link for that in there as well. So let's get started. Number 10 is Avenue from Elif Svensson and Christian Amundsen Ostby. And this is a game where everybody has a player sheet and at the start of a round, we're going to draw a card that's going to say the path that we are allowed to draw somewhere on our cities. And we are going to all choose individually where we're going to place that in our city. So everybody's going to get the same thing every round, but you choose differently. So uh, the same thing is something like uh, Karuba, where everybody's got the same thing, but we're going our own paths with it. And we are trying to connect the most grapes to score the most points. But a, a really interesting little twist on this is that you need to score more points every round than you did in the previous round. And if you don't, you're going to be punished. So you might think you're a hot shot in the first round by getting a ton of points, but that is going to really hold you back if you aren't quite as lucky in the future rounds. Number nine is Roundhouse, and this is from Eros Lin and Zhang Hua Yang. And I haven't said in this video yet, I am deeply sorry for anyone's name that I mispronounce because uh, it can be terrible. So Eros Lin was a co-designer on Burano from last year, which I loved, and that's behind me somewhere as well. I think it's there. And so Roundhouses were large earth buildings that housed uh, whole clans, and we play as the head of one of these families in a roundhouse. And we will be moving our pawns around the building in one direction, uh, moving it a certain number of spaces each time, so it's like a, uh, a rondelle. And we will be performing different actions, trying to get our family members out and working all over the place, uh, fulfilling orders and earning honor points in a ton of different ways. And so the, the core game sounds very interesting itself, but the fact that it's got a co-designer of Burano involved bumps it up for me as well. Very excited about Roundhouse. Number eight is Order of the Gilded Compass. And this is from Jeffrey Allers and Bernd Eisenstein. And this is a dice assignment game. We are treasure hunters trying to join a prestigious secret society. And we're going to do that with dice. And there are a lot of different buildings. You won't use them all in every game. So the games are going to be different between each play. And they all want you to place dice in different ways. So like uh, pairs or in sequences and things. I remember one particular building where you will be rewarded with a tile that is underneath your dice at the end of the round. But every time somebody places a number lower than yours, it pushes your dice along. So if you desperately need a particular person, you're going to have to really think about how to you know, place your dice to ensure that it doesn't get bumped along or even bumped so far that it goes off the building completely and you don't get a person. But that, that's, that's one I remember in particular. But there's a lot of interesting, nice little ways that uh, dice can be used in Order of the Gilded Compass. It's also a re-implementation of Alia Ayakta Est, which I have wanted for some time now and have never found someone selling a copy, apart from now where if people are selling it because they want Order of the Gilded Compass, but I could never get my hands on it and now I can play Order of the Gilded Compass instead. That is my number eight. Number seven is Great Western Trail from Alexander Pfister and I have loved his games recently. He is, you know, on a an amazing streak of uh, winning, uh, you know, Spiel des Jahres awards for Broom Service, Isle of Sky, uh, I loved Oh My Goods, Port Royal, Mombasa last year, and it's another big meaty game where ranchers in the wild, wild west, and we are going to be traveling down certain paths on the Great Western Trail with our herds of cattle, and we are trying to get to the city. You'll reach it a few times over the course of the game, and you need to choose which paths to take because certain paths are going to have different hazards on them, but they're also going to have different buildings as built by us with a with different powers and it looks like there are a ton of buildings in this game with a lot of different powers between them 
And you know, the art looks great, the theme sounds very interesting, and it's a game from a designer I am very excited about. And it looks like another, maybe, you know, Mombasa was a, a heavy, uh, interesting, meaty game from last year, so very interested to see what great Western Trail will be like. Number six is Lorenzo Il Magnifico from Flaminia Brasini, Virginio Gili, and Simone Luciani. And this is, uh, you know, the Virginio and Simone did Grand Austria Hotel last year, which I loved. It was one of my favorites from last year. Still, you know, very anxious to play it all the time now. And in, uh, in Lorenzo Il Magnifico, we are the head of a noble family in Renaissance-era Italy, and we are trying to do all sorts of things to make our family the most prestigious. And we will have workers that correspond to different dice. So you'll have these workers that have stickers on them, maybe so maybe a white uh, circle or a black circle, and we roll these dice at the beginning of the turn, and you know all of the workers with the white dot are going to do their actions corresponding to the value on the dice so they're going to affect how powerful the actions you can take are and this is the same for everybody else as well we are trying to conquer territory cards to to gain points and resources we want to build buildings for their unique powers and also there's a faith track that reminds me of the emperor track from grand austria hotel but it's got a a, a big difference in it so it's the it's the same thing where if you haven't reached a certain point on the track you're going to get a punishment as in grand austria hotel but this time, you have a choice. Even if you have enough points, you can choose to not spend them and suffer the punishment, the excommunication. But if you do choose to spend them to avoid that punishment, you're going to be reset right back down to zero. No matter how high you got up there, you're going to go all the way back down and have to start again next time you want to avoid the excommunication. And presumably, they're going to be worth a lot of points if you can get really far up that track and just suffer the punishments as well. Number five is Colony from Ted Alspach, Torio Hojo, and Yoshihisha Nakatsu. And this is, you know, another one from Bezier Games, and I am right in the way of the Bezier section of the shelves. Love Suburbia, Subdivision, Favor of the Pharaoh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, everything they've come out with for the, the past few years. So another one is definitely on my list. But this one I have actually had the chance to play at the UK Games Expo. I played a, a prototype from the uh, Bezier Games representative. I, I'm not sure I ever knew his name, but he was a fantastic uh, teacher of this game. So in this game, there's going to be dice drafting at the start. We roll a few dice and then in turn order, we take one each and... So when it's not your turn, you're still going to be getting a dice and you have storage to put it in there. So you need to make sure you're picking the right number. So you're going to have a nice combination on your turn when your turn finally comes around. And then the person whose turn it is, is going to get to buy uh, a building if they want to. They can, you start off with some buildings that give you some powers like uh, building more, upgrading. And depending on what dice you've got to be able to do these things, the, to buy buildings, you need certain combinations of dice and to upgrade them, you need that as well. And by upgrading your buildings, you can upgrade your upgrade ability to make it easier to just keep upgrading things. There is like a, a prize vault where you roll, I think you roll two dice and you use your lowest number and you're going to get that many points at the end of the game. If you upgrade it, you get to roll three and use your highest number. I'm not sure if that's entirely correct, but there's a lot of really interesting different ways of using the dice. It's got, uh, it's got the kind of... Uh, you know, a kind of dominion-y thing of uh, it's got a ton of cards in there, so you use a certain number every game and then there's going to be variability outside of that. There is also, <laughs> reminding me of dominion, there's the there's attack cards in it which can steal things or destroy things from other players, and there's also uh, defense cards to protect you from those. I probably won't be using those ones, but there did seem like there was a lot in that box, and the, it's, it's one that I've actually played and really, really love my game of it, and that was a long time ago now, I thought it was the very start of June, so that was like four months ago, and really, really itching to have another game of that, so I will definitely be trying to pick up Colony number five, that was. Number four is Fields of Green from Vangelis Bagiotakis, and this is from Artipia Games, and this could, could be summed up by Among the Stars on a Farm, which, you know, might, might sound uh, dismissive, but that is, you know, a really exciting thing for me. I love Among the Stars. It's definitely one of my favourites. It's a card drafting, drafting game, if you don't know, where the, we have uh, square cards and we are doing the seven wonders thing of uh, you play the card for its cost or you can discard it for coins. And the expansions have added a ton of different things that you can do on top of that. And you are trying to build a, a space station. 
and you know where the cards are affects how much they're going to score or if you can even place them there uh, so on top of it being uh, a race to score the most points is also a kind of logistical puzzle of how are you going to set out your space station so it's going to score the most points. So in that sense, those things carry over into fields of green. Instead of building a space station, we are building a farm and certain things carry over into that as well. So, you know, certain things have been converted exactly into this, but it has some very big differences as well. The first, which might not be a big deal to some people, but it's a big deal for me. It's there's no setup time added if you have extra cards if you have promos or expansions or whatever they just get shuffled into their decks and it doesn't increase the you know setup time in among the stars you have to have a certain number of these a certain number of these and you have to separate them put the right number in for the number of players and it's that's i'd say that is the main thing that kind of holds among the stars back from being played a lot more because i love the game but I always know that, okay, if we're going to be playing Among the Stars, I need to sit there for uh, quite a while at the start, kind of remembering how many of each thing we're going to pull out for uh, two players. And on top of that, you know, all of the types of basic cards have to be, uh, they're in different sleeves so that I can kind of shuffle the sleeves and pull them out of there. It's, it just takes a while, is what I'm trying to say. And in this, you don't have to do any of that. They're also, instead of being one big uh, deck of cards that we draw from, as in Among the Stars, we now separate the colours into different decks. And at the start of each round, every player is going to decide which colours the, their starting hand is going to come from. So it's not like Among the Stars where you could really go for certain colours and be getting cards that really want you to place a load of green buildings down, for example, to score a ton of points and then no green buildings ever come out for the rest of the game. That presumably can't happen now because at the start of the round, you're going to decide if you really desperately want red cards, then you can fill your hand with red cards if you desperately need that. So it's going to take that, uh, it's going to mitigate a bit of the look of the draw in the game. On top of that, there are abilities that trigger every round now called harvest abilities. There is another resource in the game. So uh, I think it's water that is the equivalent of fuel from among the stars. Now there's food to think of on top of that. And it's more like rather than among the stars is building up a space station, but you are mainly trying to just score the most points. Your decision all of the time is what is the best thing I can do from this hand and the hands that are coming back to me which combination of cards is going to score me the most points. In this, it's more about building an engine up that is going to keep you going as well as score you points at the end of the game. It sounds very, very interesting, and I'll definitely be trying to pick up Fields of Green, my number four. Number three, Railroad Revolution. And this is from Marco Canetta and Stefania Nicolini. And so, for a start, the, the things that made me you know so excited about this game before I even read much about it, it's from Watch Your Game. And they produce amazing games year after year. So just here I have, you know, Vasco da Gama, Vino, Sanguo, Signori. There was Nippon, uh, Madeira, and I'm sure a couple that I have forgotten about. So not only are Watch Your Game amazing at putting out the heavier side of games, which I love, also Marco Canetta and Stefania Nicolini made Zanguo which is definitely one of my favorites. So seeing them team up again is fantastic and very exciting. In this game, we are building railroads across America in the 19th century. And I won't go into too much about what the game's about because you can uh, go on BoardGameGeek or check uh, you know, links on Twitter and things and see fantastic uh, easy to read previews of the, you know, the intricacies of the game from Paul Groban and the thing that jumps out at me at the most about the game is that we start the game with mostly kind of non-specialized average workers. And over the course of the game, we will be hiring workers that are a particular color, which affect the cost of all of the actions, depending on which worker you send there, it's going to cost a different amount. And you are going to get a different effect based on which color of worker you send there. So it looks like there's a lot going on in the game in general. We are, you know, building railroads, stations, telegraph stations across the country to try and, you know, advance our development as quickly as possible. It looks like there's a lot going on just in itself. But on top of that, this added thing of the workers all having different specialties and kind of having pros and cons for every action really sounds very interesting. 
And so that is why Railroad Revolution is my number three. Number two is Oracle of Delphi from the one and only Stefan Feld. I love a lot of Stefan Feld games. Uh, you know, Amerigo, Castles of Burgundy, Macau, some amazing things, some of my favorites as well. And so a new one, fantastic. There hasn't been one apart from, there was Castles of Burgundy, the card game earlier in the year that I really loved. There was Aquasphere two years ago now. So another you know, big Stefan Feld game is very, very exciting for me. And in this, we are in a competition to impress Zeus by completing all of his demands first. We are traveling around this modular uh, hexagonal board with all these different pieces representing the, the seas and the islands that we are going around. Uh, we get uh, three dice in the game to be able to roll these different numbers and symbols which determine the actions we take. We'll always get to take three actions, but they're going to be kind of determined by the dice. And I'm sure you'll be able to mitigate those dice in some way, which, as, as you can in a lot of uh, Steppenfeld games. And you can also get support from the gods to try and give you powers to try and tip the race in your favour, because it is a race to to try and complete these goals as quickly as we can and race back to Zeus and show him that we are the best. So the game looks beautiful, sounds very interesting and from one of my favorite designers. So that's why Oracle of Delphi is at my number two. And finally, number one, my most anticipated game of Essen 2016 is A Feast for Odin from Uwe Rosenberg. And Uwe Rosenberg is one of my favorite designers, see, I'm, I'm not really sure which, you know, to put, I have never done like a complete ranking, but definitely up there. Agricola was probably the first Euro game that I played, and it was my favorite for a long, long, long time. So, and, and uh, over the course of me buying games, I have bought and loved, you know, so many of his games, you know, uh, Agricola, Gates of Lo Yang, Fields of All, uh, Makata, Aura and Labora, Glass Road. There's, there's more I'm forgetting, I'm sure, off that list. Patchwork, you know, tons and tons of games that I just absolutely adore. And this looks like another one that I am, well, I'm completely excited about it so far. So in this game, it's another one where we have, it's the kind of thing that he's done in more recent games where we have a huge set of actions. So it looks like a ton of kind of freedom and maybe an overwhelming amount of freedom to place uh, workers on these actions. And we are doing all sorts of things, you know, standard things, gathering resources and things, trying to get food to feed our workers and stuff. It's Viking themed, so we were sending workers out to, uh, you know, conquer islands for us and, you know, gather, you know, go hunting and gather meat to, to feed the other Vikings. But as well as the core, you know, Rosenberg thing of, you know, action, worker placement and, you know, re upgrading resources as well has been a, a common theme. So it looks like there's a lot of that in this game as well, flipping resources to make them uh, more valuable things. In this as well, we have a central board, and if you conquer the islands, you will get more of these boards of kind of... There's a, there's a patchworky kind of thing of all of the resources are different sizes and shapes, and you will be placing them in such a way as to increase your income in your personal board, covering up uh, you know, old spaces is gonna increase your income every round. If you can surround certain pieces, you will get you know, food and resources as income every round. You can just cover them up if you want to, but if you can be clever about it and just surround them, you will get more things every round. And on top of everything, it's the kind of uh, Agricola thing of, you start the game with a million minus points and over the course of the game, cover them all, do things to cover up all of these minus points and, uh, you know, start, end the game with a lot more than you started with. There is also, you know, feeding your people, but it's, it's another, you know, logistical puzzle rather than just having enough food, as in, say, Agricola. Now you need to have the right pieces of food. So the, the, the food that you use is, you know, very thin pieces to go along this line that's a big banquet table on your board but also there are certain colors can't be next to other colors. And if you use certain things, you will get bonuses for using the right kinds of food. It sounds like there are a million things going on. There is, you know, a huge, huge box, tons of different resources and chits and tokens and things. They actually comes with plastic trays to organize the sheer amount of things that are in this game. The only maybe little hesitation I have is that there have been games like uh, Caverna, which I still enjoyed Caverna, but I didn't really like the kind of 
overwhelming thing of, okay, the whole game is available to you right now. Make your decision. And it's going to be like that every time. And if you just keep doing the same thing, because there's just two of us. So if we go down, you know, completely separate paths and it works for one of us, we'll probably try and keep doing that. So the game being variable, as it is in things like Agricola and, uh, and Lo Yang and things, the game being variable is really important to us and makes it a lot more interesting and exciting for us as well. It has got uh, you know, occupation cards and things in it that will uh, give you certain benefits that sound very interesting. And the whole game, you know, it, it looks beautiful. It's got a million resources and looks like a million different directions you can go down. I am just very, very, very excited about A Feast for Odin. And really, I am pretty excited about every game that I mentioned. If, you know, if I wasn't really excited about a game, then I didn't really write it on the list. But these are just the ones that, you know, there's, there's a ton of things that aren't from, you know, well-known designers and big companies that hopefully I covered some of them in the, uh, you know, the bigger non-top 10 list. But I can't deny that, despite the fact that I'm sure a lot of people will be excited about some of these games, I am as well. You know, Uwe Rosenberg, Stefan Feld, uh, Ted Alspach, some amazing designers coming up with amazing games this year and it sounds like there is going to be a ton to look out for at Essen 2016. So what are your favourites? Let me know if there's something you think, some glaring omission you think I have missed from my top, not just my top 10, there is another video, you know there's a top 10 expansions video and the other video kind of covers all of the things that I'm very excited about that aren't in the top 10, I'll put links for those up there. But what are you looking forward to? What should I look out for at Essen? Because I am getting to go this year for the very first time, which I am very, very excited about. Aside from the fact that all of these amazing games are coming to us, I'll be able to go there and kind of see what Essen is like firsthand for the very first time. Completely excited about that, but yes. Let me know what you're excited about, what you think I should go and check out. And thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next video. Bye.